Hi, I'm Gabrielle Slater, and here we are at the beautiful Van Wazel Performing Arts Hall on the opening night of the 14th annual Sarasota Film Festival. I know everyone's excited to see our kickoff movie, Robot and Frank, starring Frank Langella. And I know Mr. Langella is going to be joining us on the red carpet any minute. It's going to be an exciting night tonight, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm here with Peter Sanders. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Sanders. Now, I know you have a film that's showing in the film festival this year. Tell us a little bit about Altina. Altina is a very special and very personal film of mine because it's a movie about a, a 20th century heiress who um, came from the largest mansion in New York City and was the heir of the tobacco um, tycoon of Lucky Strike. And she didn't just become a housewife, she became a very famous artist who went on to design the Harlequin glasses in the 1920s. She went on to work with uh, George Groats and Salvador Dali and, and became a very well-known, good, surrealist painter. And then she she went on to like do a lot of social movements. So you see her working with people in the McCarthy era, people in the Civil Rights era. She was intimate friends with Martin Luther King Jr. And she went on to become a very um, uh, kind of vanguardist and a proto-feminist of her time, along with having four husbands, one of which was 40 years younger than she was. So as my paternal grandmother, I filmed her because she felt like she was uh, a very worthy person to to um, film and, and my family is actually four generations filmmakers and have won seven Academy Awards and so this to me was kind of like my gift and my legacy to be able to give her and my whole family uh, a kind of a history of our of our legacy I guess. Well, that's so wonderful, and as a female, I can really appreciate you spotlighting such an important woman in history that maybe hasn't really been seen before. Now, tell me a little bit more about your grandmother's role in all this. Well, my grandmother uh, passed away 15 years ago, so I collected all the archives from all my relatives, and I had to just find all her friends. And luckily, a lot of her friends were 20 and 30 years younger than she was. So I was very fortunate to have in my interviews people that knew her and loved her and worked with her, but they were in their 60s and 70s. And that just shows you that a woman in her 90s had friends that were younger. But I only had interviews of her. I never, unfortunately, uh, it did interview her when she was alive. Um, I just lived with her and knew her. Well, that's so wonderful to delve back into your family legacy, and I really look forward to seeing Altina this year at the Sarasota Film Festival. Thanks again for taking some time to talk with me. Thank you, and, and may I just uh, say that it's Sunday at uh, 2.45 at the uh, Hollywood 20 Regal Cinema, and then it's on uh, Monday at 5.45 at the Hollywood Regal Cinemas as well. Well, thank you so much, and we hope to see you there. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm here with Sue Kim. Tell me, Miss Kim, are you excited to be here at the film festival this year? I'm absolutely thrilled. It's so beautiful here, and everybody that I've met so far, all the filmmakers are fantastic people and relaxed, and it's just the perfect setting for the film. Now, Miss Kim, tell me a little bit about your film that's showing this year, Be Still. Um, it's basically a love story in transit um, about how, what do you do with the love that you have in a relationship, and how do you translate it into that sort of post-relationship stage and about someone who struggles with conveying that affection, conveying that expectation and that love to somebody else. Now, what inspired you to do this film? Events in your own life or just the observation of romance in the world? It's actually based on a short story that I wrote called The Bridge. Um, and The Bridge is actually um, their French characters, Olivier and Josephine. Um, and it was inspired by sitting in my friend Olivier's apartment and looking at a poster of Joseph E. Baker on his wall. Um, and this idea of this great artistic dancer in the 1920s in Paris um, and her sort of receiving acclaim and the respect that she deserves when she couldn't get it in America. And this idea that, you know, love can happen between two very different people. 
um, and it may or may not work out, but that there's still something there, whether it's, you know, a dancer with her country or, um, you know, a photographer with a dancer or two people that would never normally meet. And it originally took place actually on the bridges of Paris. Um, so I, we translated it into the High Line in New York which is, to me, a bridge. Yeah. Well, that's so wonderful to hear. And as a writer myself, I can really appreciate the adaptation from story into film. I think that it makes sometimes the strongest films that I've seen. So I look forward to seeing your film, Be Still. Now, when can we see it? It's tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. OK, Ms. Kimmel, thank you so much for taking some time to speak with me tonight. And good luck with your showing. I'm here with Tom Hall, the director of the Sarasota Film Festival. On this 14th annual year, the Van Wazel is absolutely buzzing tonight. How does this feel? It's really good. You know, we work on this starting in September, about six, seven months of work to get to tonight. We, after tonight, we've got about 234 more movies to show, so it's really just wow. the beginning. But uh, it's a good start so far. We're very excited to see the crowd here. Everybody seems happy and buzzy about the film, so it's going to be a great night. Why did you pick Robot and Frank as the kickoff movie this year? I saw it at Sundance and we saw it with the audience and I watched the audience reaction and I was reacting to the movie and I felt this is really the perfect movie for our film festival. It has the right theme, the right tone, which is very hard. And in an opening night movie you want something that's feel good but also sort of moving and inspires you to see more films at the festival. So we really want people to leave here with a sense of good feeling like they saw something great and they want to be inspired to participate for the next nine days. Are there any other movies you're really looking forward to seeing this year? About 234 of them, yeah. There's a I've seen them all, um, but they're all really good. And I think, you know, we have really big uh, centerpiece and closing night films. Todd Solon's Dark Horse, I'm very excited about. Under African Skies by Joe Berlinger, I'm really excited about. There, we have a world premiere of a film called American Man that we're showing at the Sarasota Opera House on Thursday the 19th. Very excited to be showing that movie. We're going to have some NFL players there. It's really about football and uh, the impact that it's had on this one man's life and his sort of disease that he developed after he retired from the NFL. So uh, we've got a lot of different diverse things happening. We have the WWE superstars coming. Oh, uh, it's great. walking the red carpet. It's going to be great. So we have like very different, diverse, fun stuff for everybody. I hope. Well, Mr. Hall, it's clear that all your hard work this year is going to make this one of the best film festivals we've ever had. So thank you again for joining me, and we look forward to seeing all those great movies. Thank you so much for having me, and it's great to have you guys here again. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Hi, we're here with filmmaker Gary Mers. Mr. Mers, tell us a little bit about your film that's showing this year, Dancing on the Volcano. It's a uh, documentary, a feature documentary, 75 minutes long. It discusses the life and times of a lady named Nadja Marino, who became the senior illustrator for the New York Times, uh, mentored Andy Warhol, and uh, created the Beehive hairdo. But that is contemporary, going back, 70, 60 years, she was the most beautiful woman in the world. She climbed mountains, she was adventurous, she was exactly what every woman today wanted to be. And uh, she also collaborated with Armando Marie Muhica that saved hundreds of people from the Nazi regime. Well, I see you're standing here with a beautiful lady, and I, I can see you have an admiration for a powerful woman. What inspired you to look in this per into this particular lady's life? I own an art gallery. Uh, I represented her, and uh, she asked me to tell her story. It took a while. It took a little bit of uh, preparation. It was a four-year in the making process. Well worth it. Well, Mr. Mers, when, when can we catch your film? Where can you catch my film? When can when and where can we catch your film? You can catch my film on Sunday at 4:30 or Tuesday at 3:30. Well, that's so great. Thank you for taking a couple minutes to speak with me tonight, and good luck with your, your showing this year. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, we're here with the hot team of men from the movie Text Message. Tell me, gentlemen, what does it mean to you to have Text Message in the Sarasota Film Festival this year? Oh, fantastic. I love it. It's one of my favorite films, obviously. What about you, Josh? Uh, it means the world to have the recognition of the Sarasota Film Festival. Text Message is a project which was kindling in my heart for such a long time and it's so gorgeous to see it finally actualized on screen. So tell me, tell me some of the themes that go on in the film text message. First one I would like to say, I think, I don't know, I think divine intervention was one of the big ones that came to my mind, you know, and that might be a, mo a little smaller theme that goes beyond it, but on the surface we have text messaging, of course, you know, texting while driving, not paying attention, 
But uh, I think divine intervention is one of the bigger things. Yes, text messaging and the prevalence of social media is a microcosm of the bigger problems of modernity. We're just way too distracted to focus on the sublime aspects of life. And uh, text message is one of those stop, look, and listen kind of films to where you're you're supposed to uh, pay attention to the ones that you love around you and to uh, the spiritual aspects of one's life rather than on the on the benign and the ordinary and, and hustle Jamal bustle. Is a part of the film as well. Here, Jamal, why don't you go ahead and step in here? Oh, we're here with the wonderful producer. Um, tell us, and now I've heard that text message deals with a lot of contemporary themes like technology and divine in intervention. Tell me a little bit about why text message was such an important movie to you. It was such an important to me, movie to me because these days everybody's texting and driving and uh, jealousy with uh, texting uh, and uh, people want to find out their spouse or lover that who's texting them you know uh, so I, I just thought it would be uh, it relates to today's world of people texting driving and jealousy basically well thanks so much for taking a few moments to speak with me gentlemen and we all look forward to seeing text message Thank you so much. Hi, we're here with Christine Sutherland, one of the stars of the film The Perfect Wedding. Christine, tell me a little bit about what it was like to be in this film. You know what, it was an amazing experience. I really, it was my first indie, and the thing that I just loved was this atmosphere where we got up every day and went, oh my gosh, let's make a movie. It was so joyful and so fun. It was like playing in a sandbox, and it was one of the really special experiences of my life. And we had an incredible producer, and uh, it was just really, really tremendous. So tell me a little bit more about the difference between working on an indie film and a higher production budget type film, like a bigger Hollywood film. What are some of the differences? Um, you know, there's an enormous amount of pressure from the studios. Um, they want to see product. They're looking at dailies off site. The word's coming back. Everybody's tense. Everybody's wondering if, you know, does Disney like this? How is it going? I was on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, so we were in Mexico and the dailies were going up to, you know, L.A. and then the word was coming back about this and that. And this was just like nobody else was there. It was just us and we were just doing it for the love and the passion of it without knowing. And that's really, it was, it's an amazing thing. It's more like doing theater in a strange way. Yeah. That's really great, Christine. And when can we see the movie? during the festival? Um, it has its premiere on Saturday, I think at 2.15, and then it's playing again on Tuesday, and they've added a third showing for the following Saturday. Well, thanks so much for taking a few minutes to speak with me today, and we all look forward to seeing you in The Perfect Wedding. Great, thank you so much. Hi, we're here with director Mark Perry of the film Veterans of Color. Tell me, Mr. Perry, a little bit about your film, Veterans of Color. Well, Veterans of Color is about African-American veterans of World War II, Korea, and uh, Vietnam. Uh, it was a really transformative period in terms of race relations, especially in the military. Well, we over at METV actually did a documentary with a similar subject of Color Through the Tunnel last year at the film festival, so we can really appreciate this subject. What inspired you to make this film? Well, you know, I was asked to actually film some interviews with black, black veterans uh, that were in the area, and the idea was we were going to supply them to the Library of Congress. Uh, they have a veterans history project that they're putting together amassing all of these oral histories of, of veterans. Um, and I was hooked up with a, an African-American organization that wanted to you know, archive some of the, the stories that these guys had. And as we were doing this, um, the stories are really compelling. And so we decided, you know what, we should make a movie. So we cut, you know, took a while, but we uh, cut the stories into a movie. Well, I think it's a wonderful subject and one that people should really be made aware of. When, when can we catch this movie in the theater? Well, you can catch it, well, you could catch it tomorrow night if you have tickets. Uh, it's sold out tomorrow, Saturday at 7.15. Yeah, thanks, thanks. And uh, then the next showing's uh, Tuesday at 5.30. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to speak with me, and we look forward to seeing your film. Thank you. Hi, we're here with Bob Warren and his beautiful wife, Jackie, both board members of the Sarasota Film Festival. Tell me, Mr. and Mrs. Warren, what does it feel like to be at this 14th annual kickoff event with all these people here excited to see this film? Very hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's too exciting for words. <laughs> too exciting for words. Well, that's great to hear. And did you have anything to do with the selection of Robot and Frank for this year's kickoff event? 
Now, Tom Hall picks all the movies. We have a lot to do with hiring Tom Hall. <laughs> well, great job on that. I know that he, he feels that this year's film selection is going to be the one of the best ever. Now, are there any events this year that you're particularly looking forward to attending? Yeah, we are. The, I actually teach at the NYU Graduate Film School, and we got the whole student body to participate, and we have NYU Weekend. And so they're coming down, including the deans, and we're really looking forward to hosting them and having a lot of fun seeing the films and getting them involved forever. Well, as a veteran of the film industry, we're lucky to have you on the board of directors here at the Sarasota Film Festival. Thanks for taking a few minutes to speak with me and have a great time tonight. Thank you. Hi, we're here with Gina Barado, a script supervisor and an obvious enthusiast of film. How does it feel to be here tonight, Gina? It feels wonderful. I can't believe a year has passed since the last one. Are you excited to see Robot and Frank tonight? Or are there any other films you've really been looking forward to seeing this season? Yes, Robot and Frank, and then there's also Peace, Love, and Misunderstanding. That looks so Gina, tell me a little bit about your experience working in film, and indie films especially. Well, I've done three features. One is coming out uh, probably in the fall. It's called The Investigator. Um, I am a script supervisor, which is the person who makes sure that the continuity is right and makes sure that the dialogue is said correctly, makes sure that um, people, let's say, if somebody comes into a room one week and then we shoot them entering the week three weeks later, well, they have to be coming in the same exact way. Well, thanks, Gina, so much for taking a few minutes to speak with me, and I hope you have a great time tonight watching Robot and Frank. Oh, I'm sure I will. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, we're here with Dr. Silverman, a longtime enthusiast of the Sarasota Film Festival. Dr. Silverman, tell me a little bit about why the 14th annual Sarasota Film Festival is going to be a great and special year. Every year it gets better, so I'm assuming this is another year, much better. Thoroughly enjoyable. This is a great event to have here. Now, from what I've heard, the Sarasota Film Festival is a bit of a family affair with you. Tell me a little bit about your family's involvement with the film festival in past years. Well, my sons are absolutely amazing. We would go to movies and I'd say, great movie. And they would know who made it, who produced it, who acted in it. He knows their names. He knows everything about the actors, and I'm always impressed by that. I just said, sometimes, that was a great movie. And he'd say, Dad, didn't you recognize so-and-so? And I'd say, oh, of course. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Silverman, for your ongoing support of the Sarasota Film Festival. And I hope you have a great time seeing all the films, and especially tonight at Robot and Frank. Thank you. Hi, we're here with Monica Slater Van Buskirk and her lovely husband, the Dr. Richard Van Buskirk. Tell me, Monica, as the interim president and CEO of the Van Wezel Foundation, why is it so special to have this event being held in your hall tonight? We're thrilled to have everybody. Look at the crowd. Look at the excitement. Look at the energy. They love being at the Van Wezel. And congratulations to the Sarasota Film Festival for a fabulous job. Now, as a powerful woman in this community, I know you're looking forward to that ladies' luncheon about women in film. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, we're so excited to honor women in film. It's next Friday on the 20th, and Penelope's going to be there, a lot of stars, and mostly it's going to honor women in film. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to speak with me, Mr. and Mrs. Van Buskirk. And we oh, well, we're with the doctor, of course. Are you looking forward to seeing Robot and Frank? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well. I'm interviewing Frank Langella tonight. Oh, well, how exciting. To be, and it's going to be one of the thrills of my life, because he has this book out now that is... Basically, he just takes no prisoners. You know, it's mostly dead people, but I, if I were him, I wouldn't go to a seance anytime soon because uh, I, think, uh, I think the table could fly up and the furniture and all that. So I'm really, I'm just honored and thrilled to be here. As critics are, you know, have a reputation as meanies, and that's what I am, but a meanie and a critic. But I get to suck up like crazy when I'm down here to people I really love. And it's just wonderful to play that role. And, and I'm so honored that Sarasota gives me that opportunity to do it uh, last year with Christopher Plummer and this year with the great Frank Langella. Well, thank you so much for stepping in this year and doing such a wonderful job for us. Um, as moderator, tell me a little bit about your specific roles with the film festival, Mr. Edelstein. 
as moderator? Well, uh, basically I'm going to grill him about the film. I'm going to grill him about his career. I'm going to give him all kinds of crap, can I say that, about all the cruel things he said and, you know, all the, the errors that he's put on over the years. Now he's, of course, a very humble and sweet man, but he paints himself a picture of himself as quite a monster in his youth, quite a conceited, arrogant monster. And I'm going to really hit him hard on that. I'm going to soften him up so that we can get something really personal. And we're going to talk about his movies, we're going to talk about his acting. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to figure out some way to open this guy up who famously can well, we really look forward to seeing that. that. And Now, as an award-winning actor of both the stage and the screen, and the star of tonight's film, Robot and Frank, how does it feel to be here in Sarasota? I like, I like Sarasota. I've been here for a little over 24 hours, and I'll be here for another. I like anything that's on the water. Absolutely. It's beautiful. We've driven all over. As you know, Robot and Frank has gotten some outstanding reviews. What drew you to this specific film? The chance to be opposite um, an inanimate creature and try to make you believe that I'm really relating and talking to him. It's very different than being opposite an actor. Well, before you go, I have to ask you about your wonderful memoir, Drop Names. As a writer myself, I'm curious about the experience of working as a writer compared to working as an actor. Well, it's solitary. I got up every morning at 5 o'clock and wrote until about 8. Writing it was wonderful. Rewriting it was agony, which if you're a writer, you probably know. And it, uh, it took some time, but actually the, the fact is my, my profession is very collaborative. And I've been doing it since I was a very young man. And anything you do involves 10, 20, 50, sometimes hundreds of people. But just to be alone with your yellow legal pad and your pencil was an, another experience, which I liked. Well, that's wonderful to hear. And I do understand the importance and the pain of the drafting process sometimes. Thank you again for taking a few minutes to speak with me. And I look forward to seeing your performance. Well, that wraps it up tonight here at the Van Wazel. It's been a wonderful red carpet, and we'd like to thank all of our filmmakers and guests, especially Mr. Frank Langella. We'll see you at the Sarasota Film Festival.